The point of this talk is to try and think about the role of decision making in an evolutionary context and how does evolution tackle the idea of making a decision. And if we look to the work of Thomas Seeley and many, many others, however, he has um, brought all of the ideas together in a fairly recent book, looking at how bees make decisions and how perhaps when we think about bees we could use them in our own lives to make better decisions or perhaps simply to understand how we make the decisions that we do. Um, there are some assumptions. An, an individual bee is not a free survival entity. No bee from a colony can live on its own, not the leader and not the lowest. Every single one of them would die without all of the others. So what we sometimes refer to them as is a super organism. So actually each bee colony is one entity in itself. And the other idea is that whilst within the colony there is a propagation of that colony in order to expand, in order to reproduce, that colony needs to divide. And it divides by swarming. So whilst beautiful and lovely, our very own Wilson's bee, sporting school colours, cannot, <laughs> cannot live on lavender alone. And on the right hand side we have a swarm which is roughly 10,000 bees. Now a swarm will die if it doesn't find a new home within approximately five days. Um, with that, that is a huge evolutionary selection pressure, the ability to find a good home within that time. Now there are many reasons why um, a colony will swarm. One of them, the least um, common actually, is when their current site becomes uninhabitable. Sadly, because the swarming requires a number of days to get ready, if the colony becomes uninhabitable, um, the bees often die. There are other reasons. The current queen is old and her egg laying has reduced and they want to rejuvenate with a new queen. They don't kill the old queen. The old queen gets a chance to start up a new colony before her death. Um, trying to replace an existing queen, they make queen cells and they might end up with too many. They only need one replacement and they might end up with two, which gives the opportunity for a swarm. And just a reminder that this is what we would call the reproduction of the organism. Now, most of us have heard of the waggle dance, if not the actual waggle dance, certainly the beer. And the waggle dance is how bees communicate with each other. Maybe think it is the opportunity for the individual to pass on some information. The waggle dance is made of a classic figure of eight, although in actual fact the eight doesn't need to be completed. It can be a one-sided waggle dance. Um, and it has the waggle, and it has the return. And each of those parts of the waggle dance um, confer a huge amount of information to the bees around it. The waggle run, the duration, um, indicates how far it is that the bees would have to fly. The return run indicates the desirability, now in this case the swarm desirability of the prospective home. What that means is, if it is short and enthusiastic, then it is incredibly desirable because what will happen is they will be able to fit a lot more dances into a shorter period of time. So the dance becomes more energetic, more enthusiastic. Um, the direction of the perspective home is actually designated by the angle at which the dance is taken with respect to a comb hanging vertically down and straight up 12 o'clock being north. So any angle from that informs the bees the direction. This is um, their only form of external communication, what is out there in the outside world. Everything else within the colony is usually done using different smells. So, what's that got to do with decision making? Well, whilst the colony as a whole is an organism, there is a decision making group within that swarm. That decision-making group is actually the mature workers, the ones that would normally forage, they are the ones that will go and find the new home. But the reason why they are so interesting in terms of decision-making is they come to a consensus. A swarm only flies when they all agree. And that is something that has been researched incredibly uh, in incredible detail, in, not in artificial circumstances as such, out in fields and on remote islands, 
the artificial nature of it is deliberately setting up the different desirability of homes. And what you see here is one swarm through a three-day period coming to a consensus. So every line represents a bee flying to and from a prospective home, coming back and dancing. And in the first afternoon, first evening, we have a large number of prospective homes, none of which E takes a certain amount of dominance, has more dances. Then the next morning, a whole new set of prospective homes are found. The thicker the bar, the more um, bees are flying to that prospective home and dancing on their return. And over the course of the three days, one site becomes dominant, and that site is I. By the time they take off, the L is represents one single bee earlier in the morning. After the L dance, all of the other bees had reached a conclusion that I was the best site. And only when all bees agreed did the swarm take off. They had reached a consensus. Here's another example of a uh, swarm that took three days to make a decision. And in actual fact, you'll notice that the actual final nesting site, the final place for the swarm to go, was found very early on. G was found in the second uh, set of three hours, yet it took another two days, admittedly one of the days was interrupted by rain, um, for them to reach a consensus that that was the site. So what is happening? Well, the bees are going and they are searching this home for ideas as to which is the best place. They then come back. They then dance for all the other scout bees, the ones that are capable of going and finding a site, and they persuade them to change their mind by telling them, come and look at my site, come and look at where I found and see if you agree with me, it's way better than your site. But there is some real important biology behind this. If they get it wrong, the whole colony dies. It is a life or death decision where the swarm goes. And in that, we have to um, look at that as a selection pressure. That is one of the strongest selection pressures there are. So there are some assumptions that all the other bees make. Every scout is equal. Every person's idea is worth listening to. Every person's idea, every bee's idea, is worth thinking about and evaluating for exactly how that bee is said it is, how good it is. They are all willing to change their mind. And the other thing that is an assumption is the bees won't lie. They won't over-egg their idea. They won't say, oh, mine's really, really good. You should pick mine. Pick mine, because I want you to go to the one I found. They're all willing to change their minds. Now, so what's happening? Well, what's happening is a simple case of excitation and inhibition. And we have two sites and two bees. Whilst they are both excitatory, they both enthuse the swarm to think about going there, they're actually inhibiting each other. And only when you manage to remove the inhibition or overwhelm the inhibition will the decision be made. So, slightly more um, in depth, you have the swarm, dubiously shaped like a brain, um, and you have the number of dancers that will dance for site A persuading them to visit, and when they reach a quorum, a consensus, perhaps they will fly to site A. But the pool of dancers for site B are also dancing, and you will see that they are all excitatory, but they are inhib inhibiting each other. But it's that evolutionary selection pressure behind them that if they make the wrong decision, they all die, and it keeps them in check. So from this, what might we derive, perhaps, of what groups can learn from bees in their decision-making? Well, Seeley came up with um, five ideas for a group. Compose a decision-making group of individuals with shared interests and mutual respect. There is no point having people in a group making a decision that wants different things, because that will make a consensus impossible to reach. Minimise the leader's influence on group thinking. Now, genetically, the queen is ultimately important for a colony of bees, but actually she is very rarely included in decision making. That is left to the people, or the bees, at the chalk face, shall we say. That is left 
for those who know what the impact is going to be of working with that situation. So it's not take it away, but minimise the leader's influence. Seek a diverse solution to the problem. We had A to G, even through to I, of possible sites. All of them are explored and talked about and discussed, and a consensus is reached on one solution. And then the idea that if you have um, a quorum response, you have agreement for the decision that is going to give you the best cohesion within a group, it's going to create the light the greatest likelihood that the uh, decision will be accurately fulfilled. And of course, if everyone um, wants the same thing, it increases the potential speed of that decision being implemented. Now that's on groups, but what about individuals? What can bees tell you about you and how you make a decision? Well, you are a vessel that receives a huge amount of sensory input sensory representation. Your neurons receive information and fire. The more important that neuron sees the information to be, the more, uh, the more rapidly the neurons fire, more frequently the neurons fire. The evidence accumulates in your brain and if enough excitatory pathways are there, then a choice and a decision goes one way or the other. If there are is there a consensus? They fly. <clears throat> so, this is. A, a neuron flies or it doesn't fly. It's on or off, but the level to which it's on can be changed. So, the greater the stimulus, the more rapidly a neuron can fire. One pathway, however, can inhibit another. So, if you have a group of moving objects and you need to get out of their way, and there seems to be an element of randomness, some of your neurons will be saying, go left, some will be saying, go right. Your life depends on that decision. And a consensus has to be reached in your brain. And once that consensus is reached, you move in a particular direction. You don't stand still when it's life or death. And despite the reduction to the neuron level, it is you and your brain that lives with the consequences of that decision. So, the point of thinking about bees is that evolution has spent a long time keeping them and helping them um, to live. And their decisions have been, the ways in which they make decisions have been selected for. So perhaps the final point is when you have a choice, perhaps you should be open to all ideas, treat others with respect and hear them out. And when you finally make the choice, be it right or left, Make sure you've given your brain enough time to dance with the wisdom of bees. Thank you very much.